Hey everyone, let's stick with us versus herd. If it's your first time here and you want to join the UVH fam, our community, links are below in the description to our Discord and our options trading group on Facebook, along with the link to our live stream. Um, today I was close I closed down 400 a little bit over 400 hours in realized loss um, now before we get into that if you made money comment today got paid if you lost money today comment below learn a lesson leave me a comment let me know what you're trading let me know you know what you're looking forward to tomorrow and if you could do me a big big favor hit the like button definitely appreciate it so tomorrow, is just so you're aware quad witching the end of the quarter so things might get a little bit a little bit crazy in terms of expiration friday and especially for those people that are trading you know zero day expiration or day of expiration so you know just be mindful tomorrow might be a little bit a little bit crazy i'm gonna get to my trades here in a second but for you know spy today you know was a really inside day we did push up towards the end of the day but most of the day we kind of just sat in a pretty tight range you know peeing back and forth basically between 371 and 372 we did have a breakout and today same with the cues as you can see cues um you know pretty flat we gapped up and just ripped at the close so you know it seems like people are selling the opens buying the close that's what it, it looks like you know and it seems to be a winning strategy right now. I mean, cues are really, really taken off. But like I said, just be careful tomorrow, quad witching, along with some other events that we're going to get to. Now, get to some of these trades and kind of what I'm trading and what I'm trading right now and what I'm looking forward to. You know, let's talk about let's talk about the big loss in my PL right now. This $494 loss is I had a trade on, I was short the 245 put, long the 235 put, and this expires tomorrow. It was a deep in the money credit put spread that I've been holding for roughly two weeks and I had to get rid of it because it expires tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm gonna risk assignment and it's gonna create a big mess. I'll have to sell a stock or exercise my put, you know, and um, that's something that I didn't really wanna deal with. So it was at max loss. You know, I held it right up until expiration, expires tomorrow. It's highly doubtful that CRM is going to be gapping up 20 points or even 10 points for that reason. I mean, if they do, good for them. Because I also, to offset that loss, I'm currently in CRM, which I'm up on these positions $179 to offset this $495, $495 loser. You know, right now I'm in January expiration. I am selling. I'm selling a credit put spread 220, 210, which I got about a little bit more than a $4 credit for it, so 400 bucks. And then I'm long the 220 call going into January, which is up a little bit of money. It's up like 4% today. So that is what I'm looking at CRM. CRM actually did break out a little bit here. And, you know, this it, it's still another stock just stuck in a dollar range here, just a dollar range. So we'll see what happens. But on the one year, it looks like it could make a push to like the 230, 229 area. So I'm, I'm waiting on that. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. But right now, I'm in, I'm in it for the <laughs> I'm in it for the long haul. Uh, another trade, another couple of trades I did is I did trade NIO. I made $80 profit on the 44 calls for uh, 14 days out, December 31st. So I did a quick trade on NAO. What I liked about NAO, I didn't trade the next leg up. I don't know if anyone's trading this, but um, what I liked about it, I made the money on this push here from 44 to you know 44.73. I didn't trade this next leg up. Now I do have some some exposure to to NIO. I mean, I do like where it is on the chart. I am long it, but I'm not sure if it's going to break this area or not. So we'll see. Is why I didn't go long again. And um, I am I am in a debit. I'm sorry, credit put spread as well, which is currently it's down thirty dollars right now. But I'm in January too. But these are in the money. So I do I do expect the price to increase to probably about the fifty dollar mark. I mean, you know, I'm basically break even on this trade, so it's a little bit it's a little, a little bit in the money right now. But well, my plan here is it's going to push a little bit higher. So I'm down thirty dollars on that trade, but I did make eight dollars on that push today. And then Penn uh, had a had a decent trade, even though Penn wasn't that exciting. Now what I did was I bought because I didn't know how long I want to hold this for if it was going to break out on Penn. I've been trading Penn the last couple of days, been going great, been making you know hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars there. You know, it's been it's been pretty good. So what I was in, I was in the January fifteenth eighty five calls i bought these today i bought them for 10 25 sold them for 11 25 only did one i was looking for about 60 delta on these and pen i just i took it off at close i was gonna swing it because it was just flat pretty much all day 
you know, but then we had this rip into closing. You can see here I had an alert set if it fell below 80, 89 bucks here. I can take this off now. But we had a nice rip into close. So I, I took I took my gains, got Scott got straight out of there because I just I just wanted to reduce my overnight risk because I mean how long is this gonna go on for? I mean, can't tap a hundred? Sure. But I mean, we've had one, two, three, four green days in a row, and we're coming in on some, you know, some risk again. They're looking to get the stimulus deal done. So far, it's not done. Also, the government risk government shutdown on Saturday. I highly doubt that they're going to let the government shut down, but this will give, you know, 12 million people will lose unemployment benefits the day after Christmas if lawmakers fail. They said they're close to finalizing the bill for the, the stimulus plan. So far, it hasn't happened. They just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until one day it gets to be too late and then the stock market falls apart. So right now there's optimism, but we know how this goes. We know how this plays out. I mean, I hope that, I mean, I, I am still long in my portfolio quite a few stocks. So I do hope that the deal goes through and we push the, push the market higher. But just be aware, there's always a chance that that may not happen. It just It just may not happen. So... That is why I am trying to reduce overnight risk where I can. I am a little bit. I did put on a Snapchat trade here. I did buy the 50 calls for January 15th as well. I have two of them currently down 7%. And again, you know, Snap was, you know, has a nice bull flag set up on the daily, but it just, it just didn't break out. You know, we had a nice, just kind of just kept grinding lower and lower and lower. Right now it's at 53, close at 53.25. So I'm down 7% on that. We'll see what happens, see if it holds these gains. I mean, we had a nice break to the upside. I thought we were going to fade and then have a rip to the upside, but it just it just never came. So thankfully I'm, I'm, a, I'm 29 days out. So I have some time to kind of sit on these calls a little bit. Other two trades I did today, some new trades I did looking forward. Uh, SP, SPCE, so Virgin Galactic. I sold a naked put in here which I guess you can't see on my uh, screen here. I'm in, uh, I sold a naked put, January 15th expiration. I got it for today. I got it for a dollar 12 credit. And really what I was looking at here on, on this was just to collect some premium. If it comes down to here, I get assigned. I will start selling some calls against this position, but on SPCE, you know, it can't, oh, wow, it's tanking after hours here. So I was up on this position, but probably going to be down. I was up 15% on this, but now it's, this thing is tanking lower. I didn't even see it. But yeah, we closed at 25. We were, we were sitting at 25. Right now, the 50 day moving to average is at 23.35. So it has to break through this. So there's, you know, it, it's, it, it, it can move down. It can go to 22. But like I said, I'm, I'm within 30 days. So I'm at 29 days. So I have some time. I think if it comes down to 20, it'll bounce up to 23, 25 area. So eventually be out of the money. So we're, we're kind of have to play with this. But it looks like, you know, this thing is selling off $2 into after hours here. I don't know if there's any news here. Oh, they are. Um, Virgin Galactic shared a trading lower after the company filed for roughly 112 million share common stock offering. So that's great. That's great. So that's 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 what's happening right now. So if you're in on this, just be aware that they, they, they just had, I mean, I just found out myself, they're having a offering right now, Virgin Galactic. Doesn't say what the share price is, but probably gonna be like, what, 22, 23, I'd imagine, maybe even, I don't know, hopefully not 20. Hopefully not 20. But I think uh, I think it'll come out of this live. I mean, I could always put on another one. I might sell, I might I might average down if it if it comes down here. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, then an Airbnb, I put on a credit put spread. Now, Airbnb is up nine bucks today. This one's kind of flat right now, so we gotta wait for some data to kick in. So this is for January expiration as well. Airbnb, I'm short the 130, long the 125. And I did get a, let's see, what did I get for this? I got $1.85 credit, which is, which is pretty nice. So Airbnb, what I'm looking for, Obviously, I stayed above 130, but what I liked here, I mean, had a really solid bounce run at 125. You know, I think that it's going to try to push like 160 area, 155, and that way I'm going to take my trade off. Probably going to be close to a 50% winner, take it off and see if it comes back down. You know, right now, I mean, that last two days have been amazing. I got in, I got in right around like 148, 149 area, and it went up, to, it hit 152, but now it's obviously lower into the into the close here. So we'll see. You know, just trying to sell some premium in some of these. I didn't, I didn't like DoorDash. Now DoorDash was, 
an option as well. But why I didn't like them, Cytron started attacking them, and you can see it had a huge dip here from 158 down to 149. So Cytron started attacking them, and it had a V-shaped recovery, but obviously it hasn't recovered because it, it, it drifted back lower. So I don't know what's going to happen with DoorDash, but this, its chart didn't look as good to me. And it's, I, I think it, I think it could definitely go lower. So I didn't want to I didn't want to sell a put spread. I didn't want to sell a call spread either because. By the chance it does get some random upgrade or something, it's gonna. I think it's gonna fly. So, you know, just want to be careful about that. Uh, FedEx. I was in FedEx and I sold. <laughs> I only made. I made a, a measly two dollars on that trade. And what I did was I, I bought the dip on FedEx, thinking that there was gonna be a pre earnings run up, and there was. Today there was a nice run up. Last couple days ran up, you know. But I bought it when it was like two ninety four back in, back in here. Uh, I bought it. I bought it was like 292 back in here. So that's why it wasn't up. There. I had to let four days. I let four days pass, and it ripped up into the close here. So I, I I took it off around 294. Took it off, and thankfully I did because this thing's this thing's cratering right now. And the reason why FedEx did really well for earnings, beat um both the top and the bottom. But the issue is that they didn't issue guidance. I don't know why they didn't issue guidance, but it's really hurting the stock. And we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on it. If 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 falls, I mean, it's only at 282 right now, so we're not even back to where we were just a few days ago. You know, we're not we're we're still a bit higher than that. So keep an eye on this area. Might be an opportunity to play it back up to 300 if it decides to get there. Now, FedEx, from what I've experienced here, pretty low volume stock. Options are low volume, and you have to be very very patient with with how, how how you trade it so just be patient with it i mean i was down 150 on it at one point came back and i closed it out for a two dollar gainer which basically pays for the commission so not great but you know i'm glad that i didn't lose it i'm glad that i didn't have the overnight risk in terms of earnings because i only had next week expiration so i didn't have a lot of time for that that debit call spread so also the moderna MRNA is moving after hours here as well. They just got approval from the FDA. And this is, I mean, it seems to be that all of these stocks like Pfizer, Moderna, all these stocks, it's a sell the news event. When the, when the COVID vaccine FDA approval comes out, they sell. And that's exactly what's happening now. You know, it came down to 140 after closing at 144. Same with Pfizer. So if you're trading these, just be careful because it looks like these are sell the news events. And I'm, I'm going to try to see. Pfizer looks a little enticing to me to play for next quarter's earnings. Try to build a position in here and see if I can get that to go move back up to the 40 mark. 42 mark would be ideal. So we'll see. We'll see. But right now, I'm not really trading much pharma, but Pfizer is looking interesting to me to, to get a little bit bullish on it. And if it comes down to 36, that'd be that'd be even better. But I'm not sure it's gonna I'm not sure it's gonna happen. Hopefully, Moderna can bring them down a little bit, and I can get I, I can start building a, a position in here for January or February. So, if you watch this video to the end, comment watch to the end. As always, stay safe, stay green. It's us versus hurt.